This video is going to walk you through the steps to write Project 7, also known as our Persuasive Essay. So by now, you should be very familiar with the six steps of the writing process and how you as a writer um, go through these steps and which steps maybe are taking you longer or are easier for you. Now for our first step in the writing process, you need to look at the prompt for Project 7, which is basically to write a response to the editorial you analyzed in Forum 7b. And now you're going to take a stand that opposes the point of view presented in that editorial and defend your argument in a five paragraph essay. And you're gonna use the persuasive strategies you learned this week in chapter 17 in our textbook to write this essay. So the first thing you need to do, and that I recommend, is to go back and reread that article you wrote a um, you wrote on for Forum B and see with some fresh eyes and with these two questions in mind, which are, um, why do I disagree with the author's main claim? And is there a specific maybe piece of evidence or line of reasoning in the author's argument that I disagree with or do not find persuasive? Now, when you're reading this article, I wanna really emphasize this, focus on the argument and not on the person, right? You never wanna make personal attacks or appeals or be dismissive of your author because they hold views of a certain group of people, right? So once you have reread this article, you then want to think about what are the reasons why you disagree with this author's main claim. And ideally you should come up with three, but you can even maybe work with two for this type of um, essay. So if you need some help thinking about how to rebuttal this author's argument, you can go to 17-3b um, in our textbook, and they give you some more points on how to do that. So go ahead, pause this video, and come back when you're finished um, going through these questions. Now that you've identified the main claim that you're gonna focus on from your opposition's article, you need to start thinking about what you are going to say and focus on your essay. So remember in the rhetorical situation that we always wanna focus on purpose and our readers. Consider your purpose for this essay. What do you hope to change? Do you wanna change your uh, reader's mind? Do you want to get them to agree with you? Do you want them to take a certain line of action? Consider what your ultimate goal is. And then with persuasive writing, more than in other types of writing, you really do have to consider who your readers are. All right, so that means knowing who you're writing for. Are they your peers? Um, are you writing for fellow citizens, maybe coworkers? Um, also consider what are their allegiances, their worries, or their dreams. Understanding that can be a powerful way to get them to change their mind or agree with you. Now you should also picture your readers as being a little bit resistant. They're not automatically friendly. Uh, don't picture them as being outright hostile towards you and antagonistic, but picture them as being um, skeptical. You're going to have to convince them. They're not just going to take your word for it. All right, so when you understand uh, who your readers are, it makes it a lot easier to use the appeals that will match their values and needs and what they want to see from you. So if you need some more information or questions to answer about your readers, I recommend going to section 17 dash 2c and 17.4b on pathos in your textbook. So go ahead, pause this video and create a good mental picture in your mind of who your readers are. Now that you know who your readers are, you're going to sit down and start planning your essay. In persuasive writing, your main claim functions like a thesis sentence. So look back at the three reasons that you gave for disagreement, that would be back on this slide right here, and um, in one sentence, explain why you disagree with this author's main claim. So here's a template sentence that might work for you. I disagree with the claim um, stated by this author because of one, two, three, and the one, two, three um, match the one, two, three right here. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and rephrase your claim into a thesis sentence by using um, the template in gold here which is while this author in this article makes a good point about blank, I disagree with his or her claim of blank because blank, okay? Now you can reword this thesis statement for your paper, but this is a template to give you an idea 
of how to organize your ideas. So go ahead, pause the video and create your claim statement. Now that you have your claim statement, you're going to need to find your evidence to support your claim. And your evidence is what's going to get your readers to agree with you and be persuaded that your view on, on this issue is correct or the best option. All right, so look at the three reasons that you listed in your thesis statement or in your claim statement up here, one, two, three. And it helps to maybe make a little chart and then underneath each reason, list out what evidence you have. Now evidence can be things like personal experience, um, it can be facts or statistics, it can um, really be anything, it can be research studies. Um, if you need some help coming up with ideas or types of evidence, you can go to 17.6a in our textbook. Now, if you notice that you're lacking evidence for a certain reason, maybe I'm lacking evidence for reason two, this means that you'll then have to go do some research to find evidence to support this reason. Or if in looking over the evidence, you're thinking, man, this maybe isn't the strongest evidence available, I'm not very happy with it, I can encourage you to go and do some evidence, um, some research to find some better evidence. You may use the internet or the ORU library, the only caveat I have is that make sure your evidence is credible. When you have credible evidence, it adds to your credibility and helps writers believe you and believe that your claim and position is the better one to have. So go ahead, pause this video and go do your research, um, work out which evidence is going to go with which reason, um, and then come back for instructions on how to make an outline. Now that you've done your research and you have a basic idea of what you want to say in your paper, we're going to start the drafting process. So look at the evidence that you probably outlined in a table like this and decide if you want your essay to follow the Tolman or the Rogerian style of persuasion um, and then review the appropriate sections in the college writer. So for example, for Tolman, you're really aiming to sway your readers to your position and to put yourself out there as taking a strong stand. Okay, now the Rogerian, um, you're really trying to build bridges and arrive at a consensus, and there's a little bit more of maybe reconciliation. All right, but in both writing styles, you can address your opposition and you can take a strong stand. So here's what the Tolman outline might look like for your essay. And if you want to know more about the Tolman approach, you would go to section 17.2a in our textbook. So you would have your introduction paragraph, and this would be where you would include your claims and your qualifiers, and you would also need to introduce the claim you'll be arguing against from your Form 7b article, um, and include your thesis slash claim statement. Then you would have your body paragraphs where you would include your support, which is basically your evidence, and also your warrants and your backing, which are explained more um, in the Tolman section in our textbook. Then for your conclusion paragraph, you might want to um, include a bit of a, a rebuttal, um, or you can make the rebuttal your last body paragraph. But in the conclusion, you really need to make the takeaway value of your essay clear. What do you want your reader to do, think, or believe when they've finished reading your paper? Now, if you're deciding to go with the Rogerian outline, it's fairly similar. Um, you'll have your introduction paragraph, and you'll include your Rogerian introduction, which what that is is listed in the textbook if you go to 17-2b. It'll tell you what to put in there. And then your first, um, also in the introduction for Rogerian, you'll also include um, your response to the Form 7b article. Now in your first body paragraph, this is going to be very specific. This is going to be the context, and this is where you maybe will give more information about this controversy or um, the author and what your um, opposing author is saying. And then the second and third body paragraphs are really where you lay out your position. So you have a little less room with the Rogerian style of outline to make your case. Okay, And you will can see more information about that in the textbook. And then lastly, the conclusion paragraph is maybe kind of where you concede a little bit to your opponent at times and say, you know, I admit that they have a good point here and I agree with them. However, I w would prefer if we did, you know, blank. Okay, so but in your conclusion, you still need to make it very clear to your reader. What do you want them to think, feel or believe or how do you want them to change their actions um, after reading your essay? 
So at this point, go ahead and pause the video, go to the two sections in our textbook, 17.2a and 17.2b, read through the Tolman and Rogerian styles of writing and decide which one you think best suits your argument, the evidence that you found, um, and just maybe your own personal uh, style of argumentation. The last point I have to make about drafting is citations. By now you should be familiar with making a works cited page and with including in-text citations uh, with your ideas, facts, and quotes. Uh, but a couple points I want to make is one, make sure the article from Forum 7B is included in your works cited. Sometimes it's easy to overlook that. And then second, if you use the Bible at all in your paper, remember to include it in the works cited. So if you've not already made your works cited citations or put in your in-text citations, uh, make sure to pause this video and go do that. Now that you have a complete draft of your paper, you need to go back and do some uh, revising. So for a persuasive essay, consider these questions. Um, is your claim in position on the topic clear? Is it clear which claim you're responding to from your opposition's article? So you kind of have to balance two things in this paper. Make sure your reader can clearly distinguish between your opposition's claim and the claim that you're rebutting and the claim that you're making. All right, then you, do you provide context for the claim in your opposition's article? So even if you went with the Tolman style of writing, which doesn't focus as much on your opposition, you still need to provide a little bit of context for why your opposition believes what they believe and why they're making this claim. And that should usually be done in your introduction paragraph. Then is your essay free of logical fallacies? We've learned how bad those can be and how much they can undermine your credibility. Do you address your opposition and audience respectfully? Don't be dismissive of them um, and their um, concerns, especially of your opposition. Readers don't like that when they sense that you're not taking the other side seriously. Then for your body paragraphs, make sure that each paragraph supports your claim and is backing you up somehow. Um, then as always, do your body paragraphs have topic sentences? Are they unified and coherent? Do they have concluding sentences? Do you include transitions? And then is each piece of evidence analyzed? In persuasive writing, this can be really important. Remember the picture activity from last week. If your reader is looking at a quote and they interpret it differently from you, they may not understand how that quote is uh, relating to your claim and helping you with your argument and showing why your position is the better position to have. So, so one last thing before you start revising, look at how you integrate your quotes into your paper. Are they really supporting what you're saying or not? Do you really need the exact words in the quote or can you just paraphrase this idea in your own words? Um, so there's some good uh, information and criteria and kind of a checklist that you can see in our textbook on page 21-5a and I recommend you review chapter 21 before you go through revising your paper. So go ahead, pause this video, consider how you're using your quotes, and keep in mind uh, the questions that were covered on the other slide. For the fifth step of the writing process, editing and proofreading, you all know that you can use Grammarly and smart thinking, and by now you should be familiar with what to look for. You know to look for um, quotation marks around your quotes, make sure you have your citations and a works cited page, and you know to check for capitalization and comma errors and comma splices and run-ons. This week, I want to add in something about tone and being respectful to your opposition. So, one, make sure when you pre represent the views and beliefs of your opposition that you're doing so fairly and accurately in words and in terms that they would agree to. And second, remain respectful or professional to your opposition even though you disagree with them. When you treat your opposition with respect, it builds your credibility and makes your reader more likely to agree with you. So here are some templates to help you figure out how to frame um, your opposition to your opponent in polite terms. And you can also view uh, the resources on our course page and go to section 17.3a, 17.4a, and 17.4c um, to help you with this. Now, one last thing I want to say um, is that you have an extra day at the end of this unit to turn in assignments. So our course will actually end on Monday night at midnight instead of on Sunday. So week seven is an eight day unit. So this gives you an extra day to work on this paper and turn it in. And okay, that's all I have to say. Best of luck writing.